In the shadow of towering Martian cliffs and ancient sedimentary fans, a lone machine rolled steadily across the desolate plains of Jezero Crater. It was a slow, methodical journey, and for months it drew little attention outside of scientific circles. NASA's Perseverance rover, a robotic geologist the size of a compact SUV, had been deployed to a region believed to have once held water, a crater floor long suspected to be the site of an ancient lake. With its suite of instruments, it quietly drilled, sampled, and photographed the red planet's crust, gathering what many assumed would be another set of incremental findings in the long quest to understand Mars. That assumption didn't last. In an unassuming area the rover's navigation labeled as Sector Delta 9, what had started as a routine core drilling operation would ultimately ignite a scientific firestorm. The drill retrieved a core sample from several meters below the surface, initially dismissed as nothing more than another batch of clay-rich sediment. But, as the instruments began to analyze its contents, something in the data refused to be ordinary. There, among silicates and oxidized minerals, lay unexpected molecular configurations, complex, ordered carbon chains that bore a striking resemblance to organic macrostructures. Under ultraviolet and Raman spectrometry, the sample revealed polymers so intricate in their architecture that they defied categorization as mere prebiotic compounds. Their repeating structures and sequence complexity were far more advanced than the typical simple hydrocarbons or amino acids occasionally found on asteroids or comets. These molecules suggested order. They hinted at process. They danced along the edge of what Earth-based scientists would describe as a primitive precursor to DNA or RNA. They weren't alive, not exactly, but they weren't lifeless either. Back on Earth, mission control in Pasadena lit up. NASA's Deep Space Network relayed the incoming results to researchers who immediately flagged the data for revalidation. Every effort was made to rule out earthly contamination. The drill mechanism had been sterilized prior to launch. The sample had come from a depth well shielded from surface radiation, atmospheric chemistry, and mechanical disruption. Multiple instruments aboard the rover ran repeat tests. The results were unflinching. These organic structures were indigenous to Mars. What truly startled the team wasn't just the presence of complex organics, but the specific environmental context in which they were preserved. The molecules were entombed in mineral formations, microscopic cavities in olivine and serpentine rock, effectively forming natural protective capsules. These formations acted like geological vaults, insulating the contents from the oxidative ravages of the Martian surface and shielding them from cosmic rays. And that in turn implied a deep and ancient origin, one that predated the extinction of Martian surface water by potentially billions of years. The Jezero Crater had long been suspected to be a relic of hydrological vitality. Ancient river systems appeared to have carved channels into its basin, leaving behind fans of sediment that whispered of currents and tides. Scientists had hoped to find traces of microbial life, perhaps fossilized microbial mats or biochemical residues locked in layers of stone. But what emerged from this mission went far beyond fossil hunting. The data pointed to an advanced organic chemistry that had not simply occurred by chance. The organic compounds did not merely exist, they were arranged. Their chemical bonding patterns, symmetry, and molecular architecture mirrored processes on Earth that typically require enzymatic catalysis or biological templating. The mere fact that such structures could form in a Martian context suggested that the planet had once hosted not just the conditions for life, but perhaps something disturbingly close to it. Perseverance's microscopic imaging system zoomed in, capturing a world in molecular miniature. The internal structures of the core sample revealed filament-like formations, fractal arrangements interwoven with regularity and precision. To geologists and microbiologists alike, 
These patterns echo terrestrial analogs, structures found in microbial colonies that thrive in Earth's most extreme environments. It evoked visions of life surviving near hydrothermal vents, beneath Antarctic ice, or deep within Earth's basaltic crust. What the images showed were not fossils in the conventional sense, but imprints, chemical ghosts of lifelike processes. They suggested a biosphere long extinguished but not erased. Their existence raised one haunting question among many. If life did once arise on Mars, where did it go? The implications of the discovery thundered through the scientific community. For decades, Mars had been viewed as a failed Earth, a world that had once flirted with habitability but had succumbed to its thin atmosphere, frigid climate, and magnetic field loss. The new data upended that assumption. If Mars had once sustained environments chemically rich enough to create such organized molecules, then it had been more than habitable. It had been biogenic. And if that were true, it suggested that life was not an anomaly of Earth's unique configuration. The organic molecules found on Mars, while structurally similar to those on Earth, bore distinct chemical signatures. Their chirality, their handedness at the molecular level, showed a statistically significant asymmetry, not unlike that seen in Earth-based life, where amino acids favor a left-handed configuration. This was not contamination, this was a separate genesis. It was an idea both terrifying and exhilarating. Independent molecular evolution, arising in more than one world within the same solar system, meant that life was not the product of freak circumstance. It was a consequence, a probable outcome of energy and chemistry interacting under favorable conditions. The universe, in other words, might be not only capable of supporting life, it might be predisposed to create it. The scientific ripples of the discovery reached beyond planetary science. Models of abiogenesis were re-examined. The Drake equation, long used to estimate the number of civilizations in the galaxy, required new parameters, not just for intelligent life, but for life and its earliest biochemical stirrings. Earth, once thought to be a lonely cradle of biology, now seemed part of a broader network, a system where life might emerge again and again each time writing its story in different molecules and minerals. As the rover continued to scour the surface of Jezero Crater, a richer geological narrative began to emerge. Sedimentary layers revealed ripple marks, suggesting tidal flows. Clay deposits showed alteration patterns consistent with long-term exposure to slightly alkaline water. Every scan, every measurement told the same tale. This region had once been warm, wet, and chemically rich a crucible for molecular experimentation, a cradle. More surprises followed. Mineral veins within nearby rock outcrops were found to contain polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, compounds often associated with the breakdown of organic matter. These PAHs displayed patterns that did not match purely geological formation. They were clustered in low-lying areas that would have once been submerged. The distribution mirrored decay zones of microbial blooms on Earth's ocean floors. Mars, it seemed, had once grown chemical gardens. The realization that this site was only one among many potential candidates pushed the scientific community into overdrive. Orbiters still circling Mars recalibrated their instruments to target other ancient lake beds, Gale, Holden, and Eberswald. If similar chemical anomalies were found there, it would suggest that the red planet's potential for life had not been isolated. It would mean that habitability might have been widespread, perhaps even global, in Mars's ancient past. Perseverance's drills dug deeper, reaching sediment layers untouched for epochs. There, even more anomalies emerged. Isotopic signatures of nitrogen and sulfur deviated from expectations. On Earth, microorganisms show a preference for lighter isotopes due to metabolic processes. The presence of similar patterns on Mars pointed not to randomness, but to lifelike activity. Yet, these isotopic fingerprints weren't clustered in one spot. They radiated outward in patterns too organized to be incidental. It suggested a point of origin, a hotspot of microbial activity, or perhaps a vast subsurface aquifer system. The story shifted once again, not of isolated life, 
but of a biosphere that may have sprawled beneath the Martian surface. The scientific team back on Earth had barely begun to parse the implications of the initial readings when a series of new anomalies arrived, transmitted via the deep space network. Perseverance's instruments had detected faint isotopic signatures in the soil, specifically carbon-12 and carbon-13 ratios that mirrored those found in microbial life on Earth. While non-biological processes could theoretically produce such ratios, the uniformity and spatial clustering of the data around the initial trench piqued the interest of everyone from astrobiologists to planetary geochemists. It wasn't confirmation, but it was closer than anything ever found before. The excitement reverberated across NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. In conference rooms and secure Zoom calls, scientists debated in hushed tones. Was it possible that the red planet once harbored life in this dry, cratered desert? Or even more radically, was it still harboring something now? Perseverance's cameras and instruments were redeployed with precision. The rover pivoted, its robotic arm extending to brush away more of the ancient sediment. It revealed stratified bands that suggested periodic water activity, seasonal perhaps, or episodic, like a flash flood. But then something even more confounding emerged. Tiny, segmented filaments were caught on the edge of a rock sample, just beneath the topsoil. Under the rover's magnification, the structures appeared to repeat in a fractal-like pattern, showing symmetry and complexity that was difficult to explain through inorganic crystallization alone. One particular image sent the mission control room into stunned silence. Beneath a dislodged shard of rock, a faint imprint of what looked like a spiral was visible, no more than a centimeter wide, but unnervingly regular. Several team members initially dismissed it as pareidolia, the tendency to see familiar patterns where none exist. But the software didn't lie. Spectral analysis showed compositional anomalies precisely where the spiral lay, hinting at chemical gradients often associated with metabolism. By this point, the media had caught wind of the buzz. Rumors, half-truths, and wild speculation erupted online. NASA remained tight-lipped, issuing only bland public statements about the exciting scientific potential of ongoing Martian analysis. But within the secure walls of the agency, behind retinal scanners and password-encrypted archives, the questions had already shifted from whether they had found something alive to how it had remained undetected for so long. There were theories, of course. One proposed that microorganisms, ancient, hardy descendants of life from a wetter, warmer Mars, had survived underground, shielded from radiation and the planet's punishing surface temperatures. Another theory involved panspermia in reverse. What if Martian life had once seeded Earth, not the other way around? And then there was the third possibility, the one that made even seasoned researchers uncomfortable to discuss aloud. That the shapes, signatures, and structural anomalies weren't the remnants of biology, but rather the artifacts of intelligence. Not contemporary, perhaps. Nothing that left behind circuitry or ruins, but fossilized patterns hinting at intentionality. The idea was whispered, never written, Mars, in this version of the theory, was once the stage for something more profound than microbial life. Perhaps not a civilization, but a culture of survivalists, microbial engineers, or something entirely beyond Earth-based taxonomy. And just when things couldn't get stranger, Perseverance detected a weak magnetic signal pulsing from beneath the regolith. The magnetic signal wasn't part of the mission parameters. Nothing in the known geological record of Mars suggested there should be a localized, repeating pulse from beneath the surface. Perseverance's sensitive instruments weren't designed to detect such anomalies. But the signal had bled through other channels, enough to raise internal alarms. It wasn't strong, just persistent, a rhythm spaced evenly with a decaying harmonic echo that hinted at artificiality. In the sterile silence of mission control, the implications hit like thunder. The first step was to rule out error, instrument drift, solar interference, and a software artifact. 
but the signal persisted for several Martian days. Not random, not noise. Its frequency mimicked biological timing, slower than a human heartbeat, but regular, patient, as if waiting. NASA's internal response escalated from cautious inquiry to classified discussion. The site was renamed in internal files. Non-essential personnel were cut from the live data loop. Perseverance, meanwhile, continued its scans. A radar pulse was deployed, penetrating deeper than any prior sweep. Beneath the crust, roughly nine feet or three meters below the trench, a hollow cavity appeared. Perfectly geometric in outline, octagonal and sharply defined. Natural geological formations didn't look like this. Engineers scrambled to update Perseverance's protocols. The rover was never intended to drill this deep or explore underground voids, but improvisation was part of the job. If you found this story as captivating as we did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on the next frontier of discovery. The truth may still be buried just beneath the surface.